Good day, everybody. Welcome back from the short break. We hope you're still with us. Or welcome to the closing plenary if you're just joining. Um, yeah, so as I just mentioned, this is the closing session, the final session of our first symposium. Um, we think it was great. Uh, we've learned a lot. We have seen great speakers. And um, yeah, we look forward to hear again from the rapporteurs to um, bring everything together and from the coordinator of the phase three program, uh, Jeltje Kemmering, to see what the program is going to do. So before I'm going to hand over to her some housekeeping, feel free to use the chat to share uh, thoughts, um, exchange contacts, uh, However, if you have a question, please use the Q&A, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. You can also raise your hand if you would like to ask your question live. There is French translation. My colleague has just placed the instructions in French in the chat. Also, you can ask your question in French in, in the Q&A. We will then translate it for you. So as I just mentioned, there will be some time for the rapporteurs to give us the summaries, their reflections of the past sessions. I will keep time. So to the rapporteurs, if you hear a bell, you have one minute left. So I hope you can help us keeping time uh, as, uh, yeah, we know that those sessions can all take um, more time than planned. And after that, there will be a presentation of, uh, from Jeltje Kemering and some space for question and answer. So without further ado, Jeltje, can I give you the mic? Thank you so much, Nadine, um, and great to be back uh, with all of you. So uh, good to see so many of you online with us these uh, three days. And uh, we are very glad that uh, we had heard so many interesting presentations, so many interesting stories from different parts of the world, from different projects, from different partners uh, and colleagues. Um, so we are very happy to close off this symposium in this last hour with us. Um, as uh, Nadine already mentioned, uh, we will uh, give all the rapporteurs of the different sessions some time to uh, share with us their key messages from each of the sessions that they um, attended uh, so that also those who did not manage to attend all sessions still get uh, a little bit of a glimpse of what has been discussed. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of our um, rapporteurs, Murta, uh, who was uh, in the session on advocacy for impact, uh, was not able to uh, be with us today for personal reasons. Uh, so in this case, we decided to show the short clip, uh, the recording of his uh, summary synthesis of the session on advocacy uh, and share that with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much, Peter. And thanks, thanks everyone um, for your very interesting presentations. It's a great honor to be able to wrap up this session which leaves me with the, with the challenge of how on earth to summarize such a, such a stimulating and, and, and rich um, set of presentations in a few minutes. Um, I just want to start with a quick anecdote. I used to be a researcher myself, I used to be an academic, um, and then I made the move to civil society because I wanted to become more engaged in what I was researching a few years ago. So I now work in the realm of advocacy. And making that switch, I completely underestimated just how much expertise and knowledge um, is required to do advocacy uh, properly. I'm still learning. So I know I, I have experienced this sort of issue from, from both sides of the spectrum that we've been discussing here. And I just want to quickly briefly, ref and because of that, I want to also underscore just how important uh, uh, places like this are where, where researchers can get together and discuss these types of issues because, um, you know, traditionally speaking, academics and researchers aren't really uh, traditionally trained in, in the sort of the dark arts of advocacy. So there's a lot of a lot of learning to be done there, a lot of challenges and a lot um, a lot of experiences to be shared. So I'm really great that this that this uh, that this uh, event uh, took place and that you're all brave enough and also uh, uh, to, to share your experiences. So we saw three very interesting presentations. Obviously, it started with the um, 
GWS Sense presentation from uh, Florence and Bessie in Turkana. Um, and I really, uh, I really, it was a very detailed um, um, water modeling uh, research that was also linked to institutional engagement and community engagement. And I really appreciate the centrality that you gave to the issue of in, of, um, of inequality and tackling inequality and also establishing partnerships with um, with the county. And it's, it's great to hear that you were that you were able to actually uh, uh, that your research was 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 able to reach to reach to policy um, uh, policy changes at the at the county level. That's that's quite quite something. And then the next presentation after that was obviously the Info Nile um, uh, pro project from from Leonard and Annika. Very interesting stuff. I I, I really like this type of um, transdisciplinary, which is what it is essentially, collaborations between um, academics and, and and journalists in this sense, which are not typically used to work together, but uh, actually kind of rely on each other. Uh, I'd say to, to 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 reach the types of impacts that they really tend to be working towards. That also comes with all sorts of challenges, and I really appreciate that you were reflected on those challenges, um, including the sort of you know the distrust that exists between between um, between journalists and also between um, um, scientists. Uh, this is something we I'm sure you could have talked for for a lot longer about how you how you how you dealt with these these types of challenges. And then after that, we had the Wash Gender um, project from Emmanuel in Nigeria. Very interesting. Also, I mean. It, you know, I, I I I really appreciate that you were able to uh, really share these types of challenges and experiences that you had when when trying to bring your 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 findings out into the media, and then they bring it to the journalists, and then suddenly you get caught up in this sort of this you know this this these, these dominoes falling over of, of of journalists taking it, it going viral, politicians taking it, getting defensive, a counter narrative being uh, developed, all of these types of dynamics. That you don't really have control over, but it is kind of the 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 the, the scary and the messy political reality of of advocacy. So I really appreciate it um, that, and I'm also glad to hear that you were ultimately able to 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 bring people together more through those processes of of, of public consultation and, and engagements. So I mean, you know, just to just to wrap it all up, I just want to say this really emphasizes the importance of this type of this type of issue and the type of collaborations, more collaborations between scientists, journalists, also policymakers, but also just to speak from, from my own perspective, civil society and grassroots groups um, and, and, and advocates. I, I really think there is a lot more to be gained by working together on these issues. Um, Okay, um, so that was uh, a uh, video that we streamed uh, from um, the wrapping up of the session on uh, Advocacy for Impact uh, by Murta. Um, uh, luckily, live with us right now is Farana, who was the rapporteur for the session on Technologies for Impact. Uh, and I also would like to ask her to uh, give a short um, um, insights on the key messages that she picked up from that session. Farana, can you come on stage? Yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are. Loud and clear. I mean, for uh, last three days, it was really interviewing and also different topics has been discussed. I was there for the technology for impact. And for me, it was, I mean, we heard three different presentation, but uh, we can understand there is a gap between expert and the people who are working uh, on the ground or the people whose problems are going to be solved or is going to be solved. So how this uh, gap can be resolved or gap can be bridged, that has been di discussed with uh, different approaches actually uh, during this session, uh, like how remote sensing data uh, can be used for water management and how this can be translated um, to the community who will be using it directly. So uh, we need to constantly work with the people, both uh, who are working there and also the technological expert. And I found it uh, very important, like um, the moderator asked the question, how the technical information is translated um, for the people, not for the 
experts and also few different uh, issues has been discussed how community can be uh, involved for developing the tool uh, also how can we make technology more accessible how can we make the data more accessible and at the same time how data can be protected um, you, you cannot use it for other purpose um, and co-creation is also very important also different approaches like citizen sciences um, has been discussed also um, and for the translation of the technology or the technical knowledge into the ground uh, different tools has been discussed like how you will um, pass it to the people like infographics or questionnaire or other things like that so it was really interesting i mean more discussions like these are needed uh, it, it has been previously like scientists do their jobs they decided what should be done uh, sometimes they don't consider it what is going on in the ground um, different methods have been discussed different approaches has been discussed how this tool can be developed by um, involving community from the beginning of the task so this was really important for me i mean th these all are the things that i wanted to share so it's thank you so much farana for this uh, nice summary of the session on uh, technology uh, for impact so for the session on diversity for impact we have both the uh, moderator as well as the rapporteur here uh, because it was both the same person Maitri uh, you are here with us uh, we are very keen to hear your reflections on your on the session and, and and your takeaway messages or the key points that uh, you picked up from the session thank you thank you so much uh, can you hear me am I yeah yes you are yeah. um, okay I want to just begin because I was both moderator as well as rapporteur um, I, I first of all have to apologize for the misunderstandings uh, that I caused um, in terms of timing, first of all, because I allowed the first speaker to go really over time without controlling it. Um, and as a result, uh, was extremely stressed by the second speaker and interrupted her, even though she was ending. So, um, all of it um, did lead to some heartaches, including disappointment on my side, definitely. So apologies. Um, but I thought that the, the, the three projects, I, I learned a lot from them. Uh, since one of them was completed and I did have access also to a paper that was written on that project, which is the first one, the, um, the farming in times of crisis. I found uh, I uh, um, it was not only informative, it was incredibly, what shall I say? It was it really illuminated uh, diverse forms of knowledge, uh, diverse from diverse lives, under in a, a global critical situation, how people found uh, the ways their ways of. Um, earning some form of living, uh, increasing their bargaining power, and the groups that were able to do this. Of course, um, in both in India and Morocco, the access to um, uh, women, marginalized voices, uh, marginalized farmers uh, uh, was very good. And as a result, we learned a lot about their strategies for survival in this very, very difficult time. Um, but we also learned about uh, the uh, um, those growing uh, dates in uh, on the oasis, how um, um, and um, and young men coming together actually, and to raise their um, uh, agricultural workers raise their um, wages, etc. Uh, in Morocco and in Algeria. So all in all, we heard from different kinds of people. Um, the diversity of voices was extraordinary. And I'm, I have to be, 
I'm very thankful that I was able to part, uh, listen to all of this. The second presentation was extremely of a project and a project situation, which is extremely, extremely ex um, in interesting and and happening the world over. The what they call the amphibious project. I like that actually, the amphibious project, because it's all about the water-based livelihoods um and the urban development occurring because of these port cities coming up and bigger and of course there's climate change um and this is all happening in colombia which anyway has been um yeah has has, has uh, been in conditions of civil war for almost 40 years um and it's happening primarily to like uh, these communities, at least on the Caribbean side, uh, to um, uh, black populations, uh, Afro-Caribbean people, uh, Afro-Colombian people. So you can see it's really the uh, very marginalized whose lives are threat livelihoods are threatened, and um, we learned from because it's not. It's just right at the beginning. We learned uh, how the um, uh, the project is aiming to um, um, include the voices of those who mostly would go unheard. So it's um, that that was the second. The third one I had more difficulty with which was the sustainable water plans. Although the intention was clear, that is to build a building managing and um, in, uh, monitoring water plants with local communities um, in sustainable and inclusive ways. Um, the intention was clear, but I was not uh, actually um, convinced by the um, project design as we, you know, kind of, um, and um, diversity being intrinsic to it. But um, uh, from the from the comments we saw, uh, apparently uh, those who are listening to this presentation uh, found it very interesting and learned a lot from it. Um, so these were the three projects we had. Um, unfortunately, uh, there were not very many questions from the audience that uh, could be dealt with in the plenary. So we did pick up uh, uh, on issues raised on diversity. Am I going over time? Please tell me. Um, you have about one minute. Is okay, I've got one minute. I just want to yeah. say that I think we, um, we arrived at uh, the two questions that I didn't want to answer. Uh, um, I, well, I chose not to address till the end. Um, and the since it was addressed to all three presenters, none of them particularly took it up. But it was about this anxiety around inclusion and diversity, treating diversity as always a zero sum game. So there'll be winners and losers, uh, um, as if uh, you know it's a, it's a one pie, and if you sh share it around, the those who already have will get less. So it's um, the understanding of diversity, obviously, as sameness, establishing sameness, rather than redressing uh, an inequality, is is uh, um, yeah, it's very broadly that is, uh, it's most people take it like that. So I think that 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 was also an issue in. Uh, the way people reacted and responded uh, with questions. Thank you very much. It was very, very um, helpful. I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Maitri. And I uh, must also apologize from our side. We are still learning how to facilitate and how to organize this uh, seminar. So some of the stress you experienced during your session was, of course, also uh, from uh, our side and the learning curve. Uh, and I think still the session uh, was very interesting and I'm very nicely facilitated. So thank you very much for your uh, reflections on the session and sharing your uh, insight. Later on, we also still have some follow up questions, but I would like to first give the floor um, to the next speaker. In the meantime, I would like to ask the audience if you have any particular questions already or any main key messages that you picked up from uh, the last three days 
um, uh, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A session so that later on we can also have uh, a look at that and try to answer some of the questions and some of the remarks from the audience. Or if you would prefer to speak up, please raise your hands uh, and then we will try to uh, have the technology in place to uh, allow you to speak as well. But before we uh, go to the questions, uh, I would like to ask uh, Lapo uh, to uh, join us as a rapporteur on the session on sustainability for imp of impact. Um, so also Lapo from your side, we would uh, love to hear your views and your um, uh, your yeah the key messages or the key issues you picked up from the session that you attended. I see your camera is going on. It's still a bit dark. Um, checking here with the technical. Yes, she has access. She should have access. Lapo, can you? Hello. Yes, Hi, we, good afternoon. We hear you. Do we see you? We don't see you yet. Is your oh. camera on? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yes, there you are. Thank okay, you. I just that. Thank you. Thank you, Yelts. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, yeah, I attended um, yesterday and um, was the repertoire for the second and last session of yesterday, the one on sustainability of impacts. And uh, it went by a case phrase beyond uh, reporting impacts. Uh, perhaps the learning point, uh, the first learning point came from there because uh, the general feeling was that uh, just reporting impacts as we always do in projects can actually be superficial because we tend to think on what we have done and what we have delivered according to the way the project was uh, was planned. But then really, um, what were the impacts for real and uh, um, are they sustainable? Will anything happen after the end of the project? So we had three interesting and um, yeah, very interesting uh, presentations. And they were even interesting in their approach in that there was one that was uh, pitched at institutional level, another one that was pitched at um, um, local level, as in um, it, 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 it was um, a community um, a targeted project. And then we had one that was uh, um, pitched at a supra uh, a national level, at an international level. So it was very interesting to. Um, is out the sustainability of impact at these different um, uh, levels. The first uh, uh, project um, was uh, uh, looking at a, a, a project which were, had uh, implemented a community of uh, practice for water operators. Um, and uh, what we learned there, first and foremost, is that um, impacts and uh, project spin-offs may not always be visible, that they may be there, but not always uh, visible. That uh, while uh, there was a minimal activity, like when they uh, monitored uh, the um, uh, platform that was created, the community of practice uh, platform that was created for sharing knowledge and for exchanging um, innovation, there was very little activity in there. But then it was uh, there was evidence that um, um, information was consumed um, on you know contacts were taken um, uh, innovation was actually uh, uh, discussed uh, and the what was found was that all this information that was taken from the platform, although there was very little uh, action in the platform itself, was used outside the platform. Um, the other uh, learning point uh, regarding sustainability was that um, there, there was uh, no activity. Later on, it was found that there was no activity because um, the intended recipients or the intended participants in the COPs were field workers who were always busy in, in the field. And therefore the type of platform that was created was an extra demand on their busy time. And therefore they were not always able to interact in the intended way. And this is why most of the interaction actually seemed to happen outside uh, uh, the platform. And therefore 
we agreed in our discussions that it is important to seek understanding of those that are to be impacted. That is to check their capacity and ability to embrace the impact, to be able to participate and actually benefit from the, the impact. So there, 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 there had been an assumption that the way the COP was created with the... Oh. That means you have another minute, Lapo, uh, to finish off. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, um, yeah. So, um, it, it, I, 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 let me move on then to the next project, the one that was at a community level. Um, it was found in this one that uh, sometimes you can have unintended um, impacts. This uh, project, which was uh, to help farmers um, uh, extract water from dry river basins of Africa actually was aimed at influencing policy so that such uh, policy can embrace that kind of innovation. But the impact here on policy was modest. And then also it was also targeted at the youth because of the discovery of youth unemployment. Here again, the impact was uh, very uh, minimal. But the most impact was on, on older farmers, especially women who were, they, they were impacted more because it turned out that they were the ones who were needing um, funding innovation more and also had general responsibility of livelihood for the family and were interested in the innovation that actually um, increased their production and also improved their livelihood more. So older women tended to be the ones embracing the technology a lot more. It was also discussed, um, just give me one more minute, please. It was also discussed uh, that uh, there is a difficulty in convincing donors not to go for the big funding uh, 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 and, uh, and, and, and funded projects and instead go for micro incremental funding that uh, can sponsor small projects that have family level impact. Because in this particular project, the most impact was on family, on the family unit than it was on the intended big policy shifts uh, for this project. Lastly, um, what we learned again yesterday um, was that uh, for impact uh, to be relevant, it needs the, the, the project needs to be embedded in the broader fra local framework that the, this um, uh, that the project must actually be aimed at um, um, supporting local initiatives. And that in itself will support the project being um, sustainable. And also that, um, so generally uh, for all the projects, um, it was uh, found that there is usually impact, which is not necessarily in the plant form, which may not be, uh, um, uh, which may even be sustainable. So partners may need to have the flexibility to accept that there will be impact, but not in the intended form. But this does not take away from the responsibility of the project pro proponents to be deliberate in ensuring that uh, intervention is relevant and can be sustained by those who actually are the recipients of the initiatives. And uh, we may sound like broken records when we, we say initiators need to take the time to involve all stakeholders from the start and make sure that the proposed project is relevant and supporting local initiatives so that those initiatives can carry it to sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Lapo, for Sorry, summarizing uh, this session. I'm sorry to put pressure on you in terms of time. Um, maybe one learning is that we need to create sufficient time uh, for these sessions. Um, but we also, of course, want to keep an eye on the time. So for our last session, the panel, I uh, would like to ask uh, Margrethe to uh, give a short summary of uh, the main uh, points discussed and the main issues raised uh, as being the moderator of that session. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Yeltsje. Uh, so the the session actually just concluded. So I'm still feeling a bit warm by uh, uh, from moderating it. Uh, it was a wonderful session, and I think the purpose of the session it was called a panel learning from failures. But I think underneath that title, the purpose of the session really was to rethink the terms in which we discuss these kinds of projects and their outcomes. Um, also accepting that what the outcomes are 
may change in the process of doing the project. The, the session started with a very nice presentation by Wim and Yeltsje, in which they explained a bit about the, the, the history and context of the Water Development Partnership Programme. And what is very clear from their presentations that the, is that the program ha always has been about developing and building partnerships. So partnerships are very crucial to the program. The, the latest phase of the, of the program, although Yelchi and Wim don't like to talk about phases. So let's say the, 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 the program that Yelchi is now leading has slightly shifted the focus on from just impacts on joint learning. And the joint learning, it's that comes with a new kinds of question because how do you measure learning? How do you account for it? How do you do learning? How do you create the equal uh, playing ground that is needed for joint learning if while also dealing with deep colonial hierarchies and, and legacies? All these questions Yelchi raised and, and also put on the table to say, hmm, these are the questions we are trying to navigate. And so this wonderful presentation actually opened up the, the space for the, the two presentations that followed by first by Nadia Fauzi from Iraq, who presented a whole suite of projects in the in the Iraqi marshes, showing how all these projects actually, although they they invested millions, failed. And they failed not just because they they are projects that happen in a very difficult context that is post-war, affected by climate change, uh, drying of rivers because of upstream dam development, but also because of a deep failure, a deep, almost, um, lack of willingness of the donors and project partners to really engage with local governments and local communities. Those who have, who experience the problems, water problems on a day-to-day -day basis, but those also who have a lot of knowledge to, to deal with these problems. And, and their commitment is needed to make the project a success. So Nadia's presentation was a strong plea for, for contextualizing, for being, being much more aware about the specifics of projects, sites and peoples, people and really engaging with these and for true, real involvement. And all these pleas of Nadia, of course, come again with questions because they require a different way of, of working, a different way of operating. And after the presentation of Nadia, we went to the presentation of uh, Adele, Adele Yassin, who presented a, a wastewater treatment project uh, in Palestine, dealing with an aquifer that is shared between Israel and Palestine. So that was is a very, how can I say, uh, in the current war situation, it becomes even more clear how projects like this are always deeply and intrinsically political. And that and Adele also showed how this, this happened and how by by how on the one hand the project is very clear in articulating that having a clean aquifer and treating the wastewater is to the to the benefit of everybody. Yet of course there is there is power differences, there is uh, legacies of war, there is uh, resentment, there is uh, animosities that need to be dealt with and that also translate in water. This all, these two presentations of Adele and Nadia, and Nadia uh, provoked quite an interesting discussion about how to effectively deal with politics, geopolitics in supposedly technical water projects with very different uh, positions. Some saying, hey, you, it, there is a danger in hiding between techno-managerial solutions, pretending they are not pro political because they always are. 
And on the other hand, use it, you can also use techno-managerial projects uh, and hiding behind their supposedly non-politicalness to do something in situations that are politically very charged. So a very interesting conversation that I feel should be continued. Thank you so much, uh, Margreet, for this uh, nice summary of the session that indeed just uh, finished. Um, so thank you very much for wrapping up. Um, I would like to invite also the audience once again to uh, start entering questions in the Q&A or raising your hands, uh, both if you want to share some uh, interesting messages that you picked up in the last few days, some surprises that you perhaps, or things that have changed your mind, uh, changed your, uh, your perspective on the issues we discussed in the last three days. But also if you have advice for us as a program on how we can move forward and how can we deal with some of the issues and, and, uh, and the challenges that we uh, discussed in the past three days. In the meantime, I would like to also ask the panelists or the, the people who are now here with us, the, the rapporteurs and, and the moderators, uh, what kind of advice would you uh, give us as a program uh, to improve our work uh, on the topics we have discussed uh, and, and to also help us improve our understanding of how to move impact uh, beyond uh, reporting? So may I ask one of the rapporteurs or one of the moderators, Moitri perhaps, or Farana or Lapo, to uh, give us advice? It would be nice if you could uh, switch on your camera so that we can also see several of you, if 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 you're willing to, of course. Uh, I see Moitri. Yeah. Yes. So shall we? Um, can shall I start or? Yeah, um, please. Would like somebody else. Yeah. Um, throughout, uh, I think the last session was just brilliant. Actually, uh, the the one with Nadine and. Uh, um, yeah, the Palestinian uh, Abdel and Na uh, Nadine. And the questions it raised were, actually that question runs through all of the, if you come to think of it, um, the techno-managerial and the politics um, runs through all of the um, sessions. Um, even the title. You know, it's for impact. Everything was for impact, advocacy for impact, um, um, diversity and inclusion for impact, etc. Because this word uh, impact has a, a connotation and development of progress. Uh, uh, and, uh, and it's kind of imbued with meaning, which is um, technical, econom economistic. It's, it's not about well-being. It is not about... Uh, inclusiveness, and it's certainly not about uh, the politics of inequality. So um, how to uh, continue conversations that actually unpack these uh, uh, of these words, because they're so central to uh, water projects. Uh, with, with, uh, without these, I mean, the, the, the three that we uh, had in ours, in at least the, the first two. I mean, it's the lives of really poor people and marginalized people that we are talking about. And if uh, we cannot shift the meaning of what is impact from what it is now understood to be, because after all, it, these, this money is also coming from somewhere to do this project. I'm, 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 so my suggestion would be more, you know, create the spaces to have these in-depth conversations uh, so that we can all, I mean, so that everybody associated with the project uh, and wider can learn. Uh, so there's a whole learning uh, element there. How Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, I cannot uh, agree more. I, I uh, have the same, um, yeah, associations with impacts, uh, which makes it problematic in many different ways. And I think uh, we need to move beyond uh, 
uh, numerical indicators and, and, and very tangible outputs, because often if we want to make a real change and if we really want to improve things for the better, it's much more subtle. It's not that straightforward. It's much harder to capture. And But that is where hey, we need to stay with the trouble, as uh, some uh, uh, authors say. Uh, and I think that is what at least I see as our responsibility as the program to shift not just our program, but programs like us, us because we also try to share our learnings with other programs and also we have very close relations with the people at the ministry who are our main contact persons there and we have regular interactions with them uh, about the challenges we face and I think staying with the trouble I think is something we need to practice more and 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 uh, because I think it's challenging for all of us uh, and and impacts doesn't capture that uh, or or at least the way it is understood right now so thank you very much for uh, for sharing that advice and I will uh, try to take it forward Farana I also see your uh, do you have some uh, specific advice? And in the meantime, please, on the, I see already one hand up from the audience. We are going to give you soon space uh, to answer questions, but also in the Q&A, please feel free to uh, enter questions. Yeah. Thank you for the, I also have similar uh, kind of suggestion. I mean, it's difficult to give suggestion. Uh, it's like we need to, we, we always divide. We always divide as technological person or technical person and the, who is working in the sector or the people who are working for. So how we can um, create more safe space like these or some other program and how we can uh, how we can translate the need for the people actually rather than thinking of uh, a donor's perspective or the founder's perspective or a scientist perspective. So that's the thing that you were trying to do. And we need to do more uh, those sort of things other than um, working or thinking from outside, like what should be done rather than what is needed and how this can be done. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. And I also see in the Q&A already interesting questions popping up indeed, how we can also give more space for communities or our representatives of communities to actively participate in this kind of events and, and, and contribute. We, we did have some, but I think indeed there's a, um, yeah, we need to find ways also to have these kind of sessions um, more inclusive in terms and more diverse in terms of who's participating and who is uh, who's speaking. Lapo, do you have some uh, advices for us? Just one line, actually, you just uh, nailed it at the end there. I was going to say that you have really created a special need, uh, a special niche on how to report on projects and talk about what projects are doing and what impact really is. And I was going to say that it would get even more interesting if we actually have um, the communities where these projects are impacted, actually speak in such meetings as this. Otherwise, it was perfect and uh, I was quite happy to be uh, a part of it. And uh, yeah, so we can shift the gear even further because we have now started an innovation of speaking on impact in a completely different way. We can shift the gear further and have the actual communities uh, help us in showing what unique impact we are talking about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lapo. I see uh, Margeet nodding. Margeet, I'm sure, knowing you, you have some great advices for us as well, no, right? No, I don't have great advice. I just, I just want to echo what Lapo and Farhana uh, and Maitreya are also saying. And and actually, I want to to just um, express my my admiration and gratitude for the entire water development partnership program team for organizing this and for for doing making this first step in creating this space and allowing all of us to meet in in very non-insulting and civilized ways uh, i think that is a true achievement it's not easy and you have helped us get along together getting to know each other and yeah it, i think uh that that is just an amazing amazing feat and, and and indeed as Lapo said she said it much better than I did this is a is is already the the change is already starting through this and there I also think we we do it together right it's not just us on our side and by the way I have a whole team here with me uh, and also Wim has a whole team so it's not uh, just the ones who are speaking uh, who are involved uh, but also we do it together with our partners and and we do it together with. Uh, 
all of you. Um, so I think uh, in that sense, uh, thank you very much for this, um, this message, but we need to share it uh, with all of those involved. I see that there's a uh, hand raised by Camille Okedara. Um, my colleagues are now giving you access um, to speak up. So if you open your mic, I hope we can hear you. Yeah, um, thanks a lot. Um, am I being heard? Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you very loud and well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. I, I'm going to take it from uh, um, where Margaret stopped because uh, creating this space is actually very, very important uh, for all of us in the field. Uh, my concern is that uh, we just need to take it a bit further because uh, to actually create impact means that we need to get um, uh, to the root. Um, so sometimes there is this dichotomy between the advanced, the developed world and the um, developing world uh, and um, the way things operate are a bit different. So um, I'm thinking if, if, if it is possible, if there is a way we can collaborate um, across board in order to enrich um, the policies and laws in um, all the countries, uh, and in this in this climb, um, we could um, support in engaging the executives in those countries, um, because advocacy in those countries will actually help in ensuring that um, impact is highly created. Um, most of the greatest um, disturbances um, um, we have been having uh, in this climb is that. Um, the 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 dichotomy between the political class and the professionals is high. So if um if there is a way we can uh, fashion out a plan to ensure that this is uh, reduced um by ensuring interdisciplinary advocacy to um, um the executives and the legislative arms in the developing countries. Uh, in terms of the laws and policies, you know, uh, broader things like that, 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 that um, you know, concerns um, all of us. Uh, I think that would uh, very much be helpful. Uh, Thank you. And I'm sure that will also translate into a broader engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Camille. I think this is really one point that was also raised in our session indeed about uh, advocacy, uh, where I think uh, the increased need for collaborations between um, scientists, um, but also activists, journalists, and all kinds of others involved in advocacy efforts, civil society organizations, grassroots organizations uh, is much needed to actually yeah, make make a change and contribute to change. So I'm sure this is uh, this is already something we, uh, we are very keen about and, and, and we hope to facilitate, but these sessions have further emphasized indeed the needs and, and also that there's still a lot of to learn from each other uh, how to uh, how to collaborate, how to do um, research and advocacy, uh, and how we can let them go hand in hand to strengthen um, um, yeah the work we are doing. Um, I'm looking at if there are any other questions hands raised. I don't see so many at the moment. Um, so. Um, Oh, and I see here one remark uh, about uh, from Viswa Nat. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not having my reading glasses on, so I cannot read it very well. Um, but it's about to add to the complexity of things is that there is not such a thing as a homogeneous uh, entity called the community. Huh? So indeed, uh, I think that is something that is very important to emphasize that also communities are not uh, all in agreement at that, and that there are very strong hierarchies often in communities as well, related to caste, class, gender, uh, race, etc. Um, and, uh, and that therefore um, that also um, uh, influences which uh, solutions or which directions are being chosen. Um, so we, as water sector, we need to be careful to listen to the people um, uh, and we need to be trained um, uh, on how to listen to them carefully uh, and also take into account this extra complexity um, before we take action. Um, so that are very nice reflections. Thank you very much and, and very good for us all to take uh, into account as well in the work we are doing. Um, I'm looking at the time. I wanted to share a few more last slides uh, before closing off this session. I'm looking at my colleague here in the room to help me with that. Um, I had prepared a presentation, but actually most of the things that um, I wanted to say are already said. So I will try to uh, 
keep it a bit short. Um, so um, uh, I uh, wanted to summarize a few of the key messages that we on our side as program have picked up. Um, so when I refer to we, I mean the program management uh, here with me in the room. Um, uh, as I already mentioned, most of those things are already set uh, by uh, the rapporteurs and by the moderators. So I won't repeat it. Um, but I think one of our key messages is, uh, and that's also relates to uh, the, 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 the Camille raised the issue just now as well. Huh? There's a, there is an, a need to blur the boundaries between science and activism much more and to seek collaborations between uh, those involved in advocacy efforts and those research uh, those involved in, in research or in, in interventions. Um, because in the end, I believe all of us are activists in some way. Um, how we all share our wishes uh, and our aims for a more cleaner and fairer and more peaceful world, even if we do so in different ways and in, in different contexts, uh, which also was emphasized in the panel on failures. Uh, so I think it's important that we uh, seek these collaborations and, and, and collaborate because in that way, our impacts might be um, larger in the new way of understanding impacts. Um, we also touched upon uh, the issue of diversity and inclusion, uh, recognizing that it's still um, very uh, differently understood, uh, even though there's more attention for it, but also that it remains controversial, um, creating this anxiety among water professionals. And actually for us, that points to the need for a dialogue about the intrinsic value of diversity beyond the re uh, donor requirements, uh, and perhaps even uh, as was also already pointed out by Ma Moitri, focusing on sameness. Um, so I think that's also one point that is uh, very clear from the discussions that we would like to uh, pick up in the future. Um, I think the session on technology was very clear huh, that academics have a role to play in demystifying technologies um, and to ensure that community perspectives are included. Um, so it's very important that we involve uh, communities uh, or the perspective of other problem owners uh, from the early inception of our projects. Uh, and that's uh, the issues that we address and, and the, the work we do is clearly rooted in the actual problems that they face in their everyday lives and that they and that our involvement uh, is not just a token, but really uh, in-depth understanding by listening to their problems, uh, what the issues are and, and what kind of solutions they have, because the wisdom they have uh, and, and the knowledge they have about their own circumstances, their own context is very specific and very valuable. Um, next slide, please. Um, there were quite some messages that we picked up in relation to sustainability of uh, impact. Um, uh, of course, the issue was raised about uh, that we need to carefully think from the beginning of the projects how we intend to uh, sustain impacts beyond the project uh, and also consider funding mechanisms, um, uh, perhaps even working towards more programmatic uh, funding instead of project-based funding uh, for meaningful initiatives. Um, um, but I think also what was raised quite clearly in the sessions was that upscaling and outscaling is not necessarily leading to larger impacts um, as small scale work uh, is often much more context specific and embedded in existing and local strategies to support ongoing initiatives. Um, uh, and I think what I hear again, we already uh, um, repeated a few times, but uh, the, the quote by uh, Nadia that everything is specific is um, everything specific is specific in specific places is very important to keep in mind. So out, upscaling and outscaling might not always lead to the desired outcomes. Um, another very interesting um, remark that was made in the session on sustainability is that sometimes you need to accept that some activities may never be sustainable in the sense that they will would always need external funding, yet are still worth continue doing. Um, yeah, so uh, there's this emphasis on sustainability in the sense of very specific financial terms, but we also need to acknowledge that a lot of work we do, and especially the work we do in between our activities and the care work we are uh, doing to maintain relations or, or to remain interactions are perhaps not easy, easily sustainable by itself, but are still worth investing in. Um, and then there was a discussion about uh, how to make uh, impacts more visible. 
Uh, so there was uh, uh, discussions about uh, how impacts are not necessarily straightforward, that they're often very incremental, that they often uh, are very uh, with small steps forwards and steps backwards again. Uh, so how to capture these very complex processes of how impacts come about uh, and how to uh, make them more visible, uh, especially also when there are projects that end in multiple uh, new relations, new uh, alliances being formed and, and spin-off activities. Um, and I think one message that also became very clear from the panel, the presentations that we just saw from Iraq and Palestine, but also the work we are doing here at IG, uh, that we need to remain very realistic and very modest about the impacts we can actually make. Um, I know also for myself, we get carried away because we want to present a perfect program and we want to show all the good work we are doing. But in the end, of course, it's about the real impacts that we make in those difficult circumstances in those countries that, uh, that suffer from violence and, and, and sometimes even war situations. So I think we need to be realistic of what is feasible and be open about that, uh, not pretend things to be nicer than they are and to be modest in, in, in what kind of impacts we can make. Because only in that way, I think our impacts are really meaningful and, and sustainable in the longer term. Um, next slide, please. Um, so what we will do on our side as a program, um, for certain, we will offer more trainings on advocacy and dignified storytelling, because that was also highlighted as, as need. There's lots to learn about how to tell our stories in dignified manners, but also how to engage with advocacy efforts. We will organize discussion sessions on diversity and decolonizing water sciences. What does it mean to different people? How does it affect our work? Uh, uh, where does the anxiety come from? How can we collaborate on that? And how can we uh, emphasize collaboration uh, and sameness in these processes? Of course, we will continue with facilitating learning between uh, project teams, um, because I think that is something uh, what we really focus on in this uh, phase of the program. And that has been very, valuable so far um, uh, and of course share also the outputs with broader audiences next slide you can maybe yeah um, we will uh, facilitate alliances and interactions between women project coordinators to support each other and navigate additional challenges they experience. As mentioned before, we have put very talented women and very talented people of color in, in lead positions as project coordinators. Um, however, some of them still experience uh, difficult situations where they need to deal with um, uh, persistent behaviors and hierarchies that, that undermine their, um, their, their leading leadership, I would say. So we think it's important to bring them together, to learn together and to give them a safe space where we can um, jointly address these issues. We want to continue providing active and pragmatic support to partner-led projects because we understand and we know that sometimes um, um, the things we ask from you and the things we are expecting uh, are not always easy and, and sometimes you deal with very different administrative processes and, and different circumstances. So we want to continue thinking with you, supporting you in trying to help you implement your projects. Uh, and uh, particularly, we would like to work with partners in focus countries that are torn by ongoing violence uh, and war situations to explore how we can support them better. Amongst other, uh, Palestine was already mentioned uh, a few times in uh, this symposium, but of course the same is in Sudan. There's also uh, a very tragic situation going on and, and Yemen and Somali are also focus countries uh, which are already longer in, in in very dire situations. So we find it important to express our solidarity with the partners in these countries, but also to think about how we can continue supporting them and collaborating with them. Uh, and last not but least, uh, we would also like to explore possibilities for top-up funding of projects that uh, make very meaningful impacts uh, to also think about how to sustain financially some of the ongoing activities. Uh, next slide. Um, oh, and there's another point that came up late. Anyhow, uh, we also want to invest in studying impacts, um, uh, the impacts of our program and find creative ways in jointly monitoring them. Um, I said earlier, we need to be modest and, 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 and be humble in the work we are doing. However, um, I find it also very uh, important uh, 
that we celebrate your achievements and that we make them very visible and share them with the rest of the world. So I'm very happy that we uh, have launched a an, an, uh, program repository where uh, we aim to store all key outputs of the program, not just the phase three, but also phase two uh, uh, outputs will be um, shared through this uh, platform. So we're very happy uh, to share this with you. We will do a bit broader campaign later on when there are sufficient outputs um, uploaded, but already now there are several of them uh, uh, available. Uh, so we're very happy to also show the good work you are doing and share that with the rest of the world. Next slide. Uh, and I would like to uh, close this um, symposium with a personal note, because I feel very privileged to coordinate this program with a great team, a committee, a sounding board uh, to support me, and with so many inspiring uh, project teams and partners all around the world. Um, yet I also realize that I'm very privileged to be allowed to do this job, and that there are so many uh, talented people in the countries where we focus on that would be much better placed to coordinate this program. So I struggle sometimes with my own privilege, um, and I know several of my colleagues here at IHC and perhaps also in the audience have the same. My dear colleague Vadim, uh, who, is our own, uh, who is our spin in the web of our program and who communicates with some of you almost on a daily basis, shared a blog uh, some days ago, which captures very nicely uh, how we can use our privilege to invest in something good. Um, so I would like to read this quote from this blog by Brit uh, Brittany uh, Pegnet. So how can we spend our privilege and invest it in something good? Train yourself towards solidarity and not charity. You are no one's savior. You are a mutual partner in the pursuit of freedom. Lila Watson, an Ab Aboriginal activist and artist once said, if you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bounded up with mine, then let us work together. I want to be free. I want you to be free. And you aren't free until I am. Spend your privilege. And just when you think you have spent enough, spend a bit more. So with this, I would uh, like to end this session um, by thanking many people uh, here in, uh, in the room. Uh, this event would have not been possible with your support. Uh, the great audience of uh, 154 countries, if I'm correct, all the presenters, the moderators, the rapporteurs, the French interpreters who are working hard, if we speak too fast to keep up, our great tech, uh, tech support. Thanks a lot for helping us out and solving all the issues here on the, in the room with me. Um, of course, my dear colleagues, the Masters of Ceremony, um, Ellen, Nadine, Ayn, uh, our communication and promotion team, in particular Denise, who just joined us a month ago and is doing a great job, uh, and in particular one person, can you please put on your camera, Ayn, our main organizer and coordinating, uh, coordinator of this event, Ayn Contractor, my dear colleague, uh, thank you so much, without you this would not have been possible. And uh, we can't wait for the next symposium. So we are looking forward to see you all again online with us in a year's time, but of course also in between in the sessions we will organize. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all and um, uh, wish you a nice evening, a nice morning, wherever you are. And uh, let's remain in touch. Thank you. <laughs>